Believe that there will be a brighter day escape the trials, tribulations, and temptations of their situation was to simply stop, look, and listen. Uh, and although our history books pour upon us all the credit to white educators, white professionals, and pour the credit, yes, upon Sister Harriet Tubman on this morning, I have to beg the differ, because although I understand that it seems as if they led a revolution, delivering a generation of lost people, my brothers and sisters, I must introduce you to a man that truly led this revolution. And I heard an old Baptist preacher say that it was a man from Galilee, but because, mother, I'm from the grand old church of God in Christ, I can hear the voice of Bishop G.E. Patterson ringing in my ear, saying that this man was a mind fixer, heart regulator, mind regulator, and heart fixer. I can hear the voice of Bishop G.E. Patterson ringing in my ear saying that this man was the lily of the valley, that he was the bright and morning star. I can hear the voice of Bishop Patterson ringing in my ear saying that they say that he was Ezekiel's wheel in the middle of a wheel, that he was Noah's ark, that he was Moses' staff. I can hear the voice of Bishop G.E. Patterson ringing in my ear saying, Brother Craig, Though it seems as if Sister Tubman, the white educators and the white professionals were in charge of this great movement, I have to beg to differ this morning, my brothers and sisters, because the man that truly led this revolution does not go by the name of Sister Tubman, nor is he a white educator, nor is he a white professional. So move over, white educators. Yes, move over, white professionals. And yes, move over, Sister Tubman. But the man that's truly in charge of this this great revolution. He didn't only find or provide a way of escape for 100,000 slaves, but he decided to go down through 42 generations and to provide a way of escape for all of mankind. My brothers and sisters, I have to introduce to you this morning the man that truly led this revolution goes by the name of Jesus Christ. And my question to you this morning, do you know who Jesus is? Because Pastor, I learned that when my back is against the wall, the white educators can't do anything for me. But when my back is against the wall, no, the white professionals can't do anything for me. But when my back is against the wall, I'm sorry, but Sister Tubman can't do nothing for me. But I found out that when my back is against the wall and I need a way of escape, I have to turn and call on this man named Jesus. Oh, y'all not talking to me this morning. Though it seems as if Harriet Tubman and though it seems like these white professionals and educators led this great revolution, don't get me wrong, I thank God for all the white people that put their lives at risk. And yes, I'm grateful for Sister Tubman, but I know a man from Galilee that goes by the name of Jesus that provided a way of escape, not for blacks, not for whites, but for all mankind. And for you and for me, he decided to come down through 42 generations. <laughs> is stop, look, and listen. Uh, in, in, in our text, this morning, we, uh, we come into one of the largest cities in New Testament history, um, the city of Corinth. Corinth was said to be uh, populated with more than 500,000 people because it was a major import and export city. And uh, now Paul, our writer of the text, has found his way into Corinth. And um, to his surprise, he comes into a city that is infested with sexual immorality, homosexuality, the worshiping of idols, drunkenness and orgies, and a city that was infested with a high and illegal rate of divorce. Sounds like America in 2012. Yes, our country, a country that is infested and messed up by men loving men and women loving women, a country that is caught up in the scuffle of people worshiping other people and worshiping other idols, a country that is lost in the scuffle of alcohol and drug abuse, a country that is lost in young people getting married today and divorced next week, having children outside of wedlock with no conscious mind thinking that everything is okay. We're lost in a country that 
is lost in the scuffle of wickedness. And I come to let you know, just like the people of Corinth, the first thing we want to do is put the blame on the devil. But if y'all let me be real with you this morning, the devil is not a responsible for everything that you do. For the Bible says that if you submit yourself unto the Lord, resist the devil, then he must flee. So if the Bible says that, some of the mess that you keep doing and that I keep doing is not a credit to the devil, but you're doing it because you want to do it. So the Bible says, out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. So you keep fornicating? Nah, that's not the devil. It's coming out of your heart. You keep lying. You keep cursing. You keep cheating. Nah, stop blaming it on the devil. Stop giving credit to the devil. For the Bible says, if you resist him, he'll go. So if the devil is gone, that leaves nobody but yeah, yeah. Talk to me. Can't you have your witness? Yeah. Uh, Paul has found himself in, in Corinth. And uh, when he gets to Corinth, he finds that there are great churches and there are great church membership. But what Paul finds out is that there are a lot of phony people that, that seem and look as if they're chasing after God. They talk about a relationship with God. They tweet about a relationship. Oh, y'all ain't going to talk. They tweet about a relationship with God. Their Facebook status says they have a relationship with God. But the truth is they have no relationship with the God that they keep speaking on. And we wonder why God is not working in on our behalf. Because God is bigger than Twitter. And God is bigger than Facebook. You can talk about good morning. I give praise to the Lord on Twitter. But if you're not praising him every other day. On your own, if you're not in a secret place with the Lord, then you don't have a true relationship with the God that you're tweeting about and felt. Every young folk ain't gonna talk to me. Because they know every morning on Twitter, you give them praise on Twitter, but you're not giving praise the rest of the week because these people in Corinth, much like us in this country, didn't really have a true relationship with God. Uh, and, and the reason that their relationship was starved is because they were stuck in a sinful nature. And the Bible says to us, and understand this morning, that the Bible says that if you live according to a sinful nature, then you will die. The Bible says if you are controlled by your sinful nature, then you cannot please God. So the issue today is that too many people inside the church on this morning are being controlled and are living according to a sinful nature. And the Bible says that if you live this way, you will die, and you cannot please God. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 So, so what, what we find is that Paul has came to bring warning unto the people. He, he's not coming to bring warning unto worldly folk. He's coming to bring warning unto church people. He, he's not coming to bring warning unto liars and those that are lost out in Satan's world. But he's coming to bring warning unto us that claim to be Christians and holy and sanctified, justified, set free, five baptized, holy Ghost. You know all those folks that do all this talking that are supposed to be children of God. That's who Paul came to bring warning to. And the Bible, catch this, catch this, the Bible says that he begins to warn them. Paul says to them, do not get caught in sexual immorality. Why? Because 23,000 people died in one day at the wrath of God because they got caught up in sexual immorality. Paul continues to warn them. He says, don't you test God, for they died simply from snake bites just for testing God. And then Paul says something that threw me off because I know I'm guilty of it. He says, do not grumble against God. For when they started grumbling, God took away his protective angel and let the destroying angel take them out. So Paul was bringing warning to Corinth. And my brothers and sisters, if you'll let me act as if I'm the Apostle Paul today, I want to bring warning unto you and myself. For the Bible lets me know that to warn my people. And the warning today is don't you get caught in fornication. Don't you get caught in homosexuality. Don't you get caught in adultery for 23 years. immorality. My brothers and sisters, let me warn you. Don't you be testing God. Don't you try to see if God's wrath is really what it is. Don't you go out and ask God, can you do this? In other words, don't you test God on Saturday by clubbing hard and trying to praise him on Sunday. Don't you test God by smoking with the best of them and trying to praise out the same mouth. 
you in? Hasn't God already promised us life and life more abundantly? So what you praying and grumbling for? Because people die for grumbling against God. My brothers and sisters, let me warn you on this morning. Don't you stand up against God because the wrath of God will take you out. Right. Well, what I got to do, Craig? Stop. Look. And listen. I like that. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Watch the text. Paul continues to warn the people. And uh, now as we get to the premises, that's my intellectual word for the day. As we get to the premises of the text. Yeah. 